Did you still consider yourself Catholic at this point? No. Oh my no. God, I didn't believe in God since the age of like 12 or 13. But right. that's what's interesting. I didn't believe, but I still treated myself as if I was going to hell. How so? Why? I, I, I think... I think here's how I make the distinction around the age of 12. I made the decision not to follow God. That doesn't mean that I necessarily didn't believe. Okay. So, so, you, 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 know, so you were like, um, you were rebelling against the God that you actually believed in. I don't even know if I fully believed, but I made the decision not to follow. And then not to follow treated myself and conceptualized myself as bad and worthy of punishment until literally like December of this previous year. Wow. So you had to deal with that, all that shame. Okay. So, but here's the thing, the shame that you are dealing with, did it mostly come from parental shame or Catholic shame? Which one, you know what I mean? It's Which hard one for me it? to draw the two apart. Hmm. So where it, so the brainwashing and the shaming, it, did it, it came from your parents mostly, not the church? Like, did you, other than your parents, were there any other religious authority figures that were responsible for making you feel, you know, vile and um, immoral? Immoral, is that the right word? Uh, worthy of utter contempt, disdain, condemnation. Hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, I think um, I I think a lot came from my education in Catholic schools because hmm. I was talking to my dad about some of this stuff previous recently, or I was talking about Catholic guilt, and I because my brother was there and we were joking. We we're like, oh yeah, if you have free time in the day, you have time to feel guilty. What are you talking about? And <laughs> my dad's like, what? What do you mean? I'm like, yeah, Catholic guilt. What are you, What are you talking about? <laughs> And he's like, that's something you guys learn in Catholic school. I didn't teach you that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so so just, to, just for context, uh, just, uh, your parents are now a lot more chill with all of this stuff compared um, to before. Yes. Yeah. So that's why that's why they're talking like this to you. But in Re they, Relatively, they, yeah. Relatively. Like still compared to the Sanders that we have, they're, they're still... They have some red lines that one more than the other. Yeah, but relative to before, they're a lot better now. Mm -hmm. And is that because of you? Because they learned to accept you? Um, I think it's because they got divorced. Oh, because they got divorced. Okay. Yeah, and okay. that's a no-no in the Catholic Church. Oh, so they were shaming you until they did something shameful themselves. <laughs> that's, that's speculation on my part okay okay all right go on go on um yeah so my mom told me she was like um did you think about what this is going to do to our family and i was like what this is going to do to our family like this changes nothing about our family except that you now have an additional piece of information about me. What this is going to do to our family, like what kind of collectivistic, you know, mindset is that? Um, it's very um, about other, I don't know, it's very, very collectivistic. It's like, what, what does that have to do with how this is going to affect my family? I'm the same person. You just now know something new about me. And then... This is where it gets crazy. So I had this like really intense discussion with my mom and I was going to assume that she was just going to run and tell my dad. I assumed for years, I assumed for years that she had told my dad after this. Um, that was not the case. Um, so I assumed that I had come out to both of my parents. That's actually not true. Um, because then that same night back home, my dad had a stroke. And so my mom had to fly home and go to the, the neurological ICU and take care of all this stuff. Um, yeah, so that event totally overshadowed me coming out, what that means to our family, all that stuff. You know, that paled in comparison. That just went 
that just went into the box in the corner, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how I came out. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do you okay? So there's two questions here. I have my own questions, but let's answer these questions first. Katie is saying, "Did your Catholic school ever shame you or strongly discourage uh, for just being heterosexually attracted to other people instead of focusing on academics and moral behavior?" Oh, are you saying like just quote unquote traditional sexuality like itself was shame and put below? focusing on academics and moral behavior um yeah so um even though we're out of all girls school like girls still want to do what they see as socially desirable and attractive so uh, we were heavily policed over our appearance um uniform policy strict uniform policy um that's why i think i have such a issue with showing off my legs is because i have so many memories of people holding up cards to my knee and measuring the length of the skirt above my knee, you know, Whoa. Um, for years, um, 3.5 inches, 3.5 inches y'all. And then, and then girls were being too slutty. So they had to change it because Only girls would, they would roll up their skirts hmm. to make them shorter. <laughs> and um, yeah. <laughs> and only until like, Two weeks ago, you didn't. You were not comfortable with wearing short skirts and putting it online, and you're you're still having to deal with the shame of that. And you're like, so this is like, yeah. So this is way after years after leaving all of that behind is still affecting you. Yeah, I'm a full grown adult. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's it it's it's very you when you're just taught that being sexually desirable is so shameful it's really hard to do things to make yourself feel attractive for personally speaking so oh wait here you want to answer oh i asked this? that because that was something my oh do they no, no, this teach to be guilty or, in, or shameful in catholic school did they touch on sexuality or was it in a general atmosphere of being sinful i mean um sinfulness um just yeah it's a lot a lot of sinfulness um, <laughs> <laughs> um did they actively teach being shameful i mean so the way that i internalized shame the most was through science silence silence mm. so that's how i intern that's what's difficult to talk about influences right what influenced me more parent family Catholicism, blah, blah, blah. Because what you notice as a child is what cannot be touched. What you notice is what makes the adults in your environment tense. What you notice is what they refuse to talk about. What you notice is um, what they go turn off the radio, go, go, go fast forward through this, go switch the channel. Mm. You know? So you internalize the shame because you're noticing that this is not even supposed to be had like in conversation. Like this, this cannot even be in our environment. And I mean, to a certain extent, it, that might just be adults not wanting to expose children to certain stuff, right? Mm. Um, however, what I think that's actually doing a disservice to children. I think you should explain because it was like a shutting off with no explaining. Hmm. So I didn't understand why that was taboo. I didn't understand why that was forbidden. It, it just was. It just was and you don't touch it. And so <laughs> hence my eternal fascination with the taboo. <laughs> like you don't yeah, want to touch that? Mm. I'm going to go figure out exactly why that is so so dark and forbidden. So is it is it fair to say like your your sex drive was an important part of your life? Is that and you felt guilty about that how important that is in your life? I mean like everyone's sex drive is important. I don't 
Right. Um, yeah. But you did, you couldn't admit it. Yeah. I think right. what was more important in my life was my inability, inability to even cognitively approach that. Yeah, but this is something you know now. But mm -hmm. at that time, did you, like, correct me if I'm wrong, at that time, did you think, like, you're, you are, there's something uniquely wrong with you because it seemed like, did you think you felt more, vile than other people because of how much you've thought that you know there's something inherently wrong with you because you want you really badly want th things that shouldn't be a big part of your life it shouldn't be such a priority in your life is that fair or is that not fair um to an extent i more felt i'm just projecting what i went through and to, <laughs> to see if Aww. you had if, to see to see if you had the same experience or not um it's more like I felt vile because I couldn't handle this mm. subject and part of my life. Right. Because um, as a team, as a team, I also felt vile for what I was interested in. Definitely. Definitely. But yeah, but as a teenager, I thought that other people could not want these things that I want as bad as I wanted. Like there must be something mm. uniquely wrong with me. Like, like I must be oh, so I, mu I must be effed. Yes. <laughs> now, yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. I feel like I must be effed up in the head or something that I'm discussing while um, that 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 I really need God and religion to purify me because I am so, you know, everything about my feelings is shameful. I mean, I still feel that way sometimes. <laughs> 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 yeah but because because there's no communication with other people mm -hmm. you i feel like i feel like most people are not this disgusting as i am do you know yeah. what i mean right. i relate really hard mm. um oh my god so i was made to feel disgusting so many so many times throughout my adolescence i remember and, okay being sat, yeah and um yeah go on sorry go on um just having this flashback to this memory of um like i said before there was nothing in, there were few things in my life that i was punished for more than sex the other the only thing that would fall beneath that would be like marijuana um and um i have so many memories of being made to have a talk with my parents and um i oh god um would be made to sit down with them um usually at the dinner table and we'd have a discussion about typically something they found on my computer <laughs> and um i would be made to confess basically um and i remember being made to sit down with them at i was 17. <laughs> i had just lost my virginity at a summer camp and it, it yeah and um on the different side of the world and then i came home and I can't remember why my parents said this to me, but they sat me down and they were started talking about, Susanna, it's really easy for a girl your age in high school to get a reputation. And I was like, literally, I went to a really small high school, really small high school. Like my graduating class was less than 100 people. Um, it was like, no one in my environment will touch me. I hardly have any friends. Like, no one's interested in me. I feel disgusting. I haven't kissed a single person at my own high school. Even the people I dated. And you want to talk to me about my reputation? I remember when they said that. Just laughing in their face. 
laughing in their face and feeling myself just rescind deeper inside of my own psyche. Um, Cause I was like, what are you, what are you even talking about? They, <laughs> they hate me here. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So um, just a lot of really negative messaging about um, even attracting attention. Um, which I wasn't. If anything, I was just attracting attention because I was a freaking weirdo. I was a weirdo. I mean, still am. <laughs> like, um, and um, it's pretty funny because then after I graduated and then came back from college, I think a lot of my guy friends realized that they missed a golden opportunity. 